This is Pathology, Chapter 3, Part 4. Pemphigus vulgaris is a severe, progressive autoimmune disease that affects both the skin and mucous membranes. It is characterized by intraepithelial vesicle formation that results from the breakdown of the cellular adhesion between epithelial cells. This type of epithelial cell separation is called acantholysis. The patient with pemphigus vulgaris has circulating autoantibodies that are reactive against components of the epithelial cell attachment mechanism. In over 50% of cases, the first signs of disease occur in the oral cavity. There may be shallow ulcers to fragile vesicles to bully. Gentle finger pressure with movement on clinically normal mucosa can produce a cleavage in the epithelium and result in the formation of a bulla. This is called a positive Nikolsky sign. The microscopic appearance includes acantholytic cells, the loss of attachment between epithelial cells leads to cells that appear rounded. These rounded acantholytic cells are called sunk cells. The diagnosis of pemphigus vulgaris is made by biopsy and microscopic examination. Treatment includes high doses of corticosteroids, sometimes in combination with immunosuppressive drugs. The mortality rate of 8 to 10 percent in five years is related to complications from the corticosteroid treatment. Benign mucous membrane pemphigoid, mucous membrane pemphigoid, cicatrical pemphigoid, is a chronic autoimmune disease that affects the oral mucosa, conjunctiva, genital mucosa, and skin. It is not as severe as pemphigus vulgaris, but you will also see a positive Nikolsky sign. Gingival lesions have been called disquamative gingivitis, but this may be seen with lichen planus and pemphigus as well. Diagnosis is made by biopsy and histologic examination. No degeneration of the epithelium occurs. You will see an inf inflammatory infiltrate, usually with predominant plasma cells and eosinophils in the connective tissue. Mucous membrane pemphigoid is a chronic disease with a benign course. For mild cases, topical corticosteroids are usually sufficient. For severe cases, systemic corticosteroids may be required. An ophthalmologic consultation is recommended to rule out the presence of ocular lesions, which can lead to eye damage. Some investigators believe that bullous and mucous membrane pemphigoid are variants of the same disease. 80% of patients suffering with bullous pemphigoid are older than 60 years of age. Oral lesions are less common in bullous pemphigoid. Treatment usually involves systemic corticosteroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Unlike mucous membrane pemphigoid, in bullous pemphigoid, circulating autoantibodies are usually detectable. And, unlike pemphigus vulgaris, the circulating autoantibodies do not correlate with disease activity. Bechet syndrome is a chronic recurrent autoimmune disease. It consists primarily of oral ulcers, genital ulcers, and ocular inflammation. There is no sex predilection. The mean onset is around 30 years of age. Autoantibodies to human mucosa may be found. 
oral ulcers are similar in appearance to aptus ulcers. There is an increased prevalence of this syndrome in individuals from the Mediterranean region and Asia, but it is rare in the United States. Diagnosis requires that two of three types of lesions be present, oral, genital, and or ocular. A pustular lesion after needle puncture suggests Bechet syndrome. Treatment involves systemic and topical corticosteroids. Chlorambucil is used for ocular lesions. Discussion questions with your instructor follow. This concludes Pathology Chapter 3, Part 4.